So first to build the bigger model RC Skyshock, I took a two times scale. So I measured every part of the uh, RC toy and then I just times it by two to keep it simple. I had larger engines that I wanted to put on there and uh, that was what they were gonna fit. I started off by tracing out the body with all the measurements. Like I said, I just made every measurement and then times it by two and hoped the scale would keep it um, able to fly. After tracing out the pieces, I cut it all out. Um, a lot of these techniques I learned from watching flight test. I've built many of their planes. Uh, so I cut out, this is the main body, hot glued it together to give it the main chassis. I am using Dollar Tree foam board. You get this at Dollar Tree, of course. It is nice for, to use because it gives you a hollow center and it is really strong. You can paint this, you can hot glue it, and you can make it into whatever you want. I've used it for many other projects. I follow uh, flight test designs uh, and I'm using a lot of the techniques I've learned from building planes in the past. Having the hollow body gives me a chance to hide all the electronics so nothing is on the exterior except for the servos and the engines. Right now I am trying to design the boom for the engine, so what's going to hold the engines in place. I went with a triangle structure to give me some lots of support, a little bit of aerodynamics, and I wanted to be able to fit the speed controllers inside there. I added a couple of popsicle sticks for reinforcement so that it was going to have a nice hard surface so it wouldn't crack on the first crash. Because I figured this one was going to crash a lot. Here I began to work on the front wheels or the front landing gear uh, for the car. The purpose of it being a car and a plane is to have four wheels. The way Hot Wheels did this was really nice. I used foam covered hobby wheels. Uh, I think that was a disadvantage to me because the wheels on the Hot Wheels were just straight plastic and I think that gave them uh, a slippery advantage so they were able to turn a lot sharper. If I wanted to get that kind of control I would have to um, cut the rubber off or cut the foam off the wheels that I have and I think it worked just the same. I did add a metal rod to make them nice and sturdy and it is pretty tight inside the foam there uh, to give it the shape that the car originally had. This is where I started working on the wings. I kept the same shape that the wings had on the RC car. Like I said, I'm trying to make everything scale uh, to hopefully have the best chance of success. As you can see here, I did cut a line in there to bend the wings. That's to give it an airfoil. Because I was only using one sheet of foam for the wings, uh, I had no way of creating the airfoil to give it that lift that it needs to get off the ground and make the wings stable. Uh, this is a technique I learned from building the old Speedster from flight test, and it works really well. And it actually did work really well when I went to fly this because it had plenty of lift when those wings were in the right position. I'm working on the tail end here. This was another major component that was one of the reasons why I wanted to build my own is because the original did not have any kind of elevator control. It had a little piece that you can move up and down by your hands, but that doesn't help you when you're flying the plane. Uh, you have to have it on the ground to be able to change it. And it did help quite a bit and made it fly more stable, um, but I really wanted the control in my hands while it was flying. So I did add a controllable elevator and this helped immensely. I was able to climb, I was able to descend, uh, and it really helped it give it a more of a plane-like feel and better flight characteristics. Like with the rest of the plane, I wanted to keep it to scale, so I kept uh, the same three support struts for the upper wing, this gave it a really stable flight. It didn't have any shakiness, the tail really kept it um, in line and it flew amazingly well. I was really surprised once I got it up in the air how well it flew and I contribute this a lot to that tail fin. 
Now this is getting into the fun part. Um, I was trying to figure out the best way of going about uh, making the wings retractable so that it could drive on the ground and fly in the air with the push of a button. This was hard to replicate. Um, the way Hot Wheels did it, they had two servos, one for each wing, and they were mounted on an angle, which gave the wing the opportunity to fold up into the side, which made it look a little bit more like a car than mine did. Um, I just didn't have the kind of right materials for that, and I used just a simple 9 gram servo, and I ended up going with a popsicle stick support system and rods to hold either side. This was really hard to come up with, but I think it worked pretty well. Um, it folds the wings enough to not give it lift when you're driving on the ground, but once you pop those out and put it into airplane mode, it will take off. While my wings did not fold back exactly like the Hot Wheels uh, Skyshock, it did do its purpose. They folded enough to not give it lift while it's on the ground and in car mode, but as soon as you flip that switch, the wings pop out to a regular airplane flight mode. You get the lift from the um, airfoil and it takes off just like an airplane. You can see the way I did this. I took popsicle sticks, drilled holes in two of them, put a screw through there. It's just a simple servo screw uh, to hold them together so that they can still rotate on each other. And then I added some support popsicle sticks beneath that. It's not the strongest. I did go back later and add a few more popsicle sticks all around it, keeping it the ability to fold in and out, um, but having a much rigid structure. I think I ended up using like 10 popsicle sticks just for the wing supports, but it ended up working really well. Um, not the strongest. I would want to use like carbon fiber rods later on down the road if I wanted to make a nicer model, um, but this works for now and uh, they are readily available and I got those at the dollar store too. So this is when I installed the elevator servo. It's just a simple nine grand servo. I tucked it up underneath the top wing uh, for the tail fin. Uh, so it was able to give enough lift and I didn't have to have a huge spar. I did add a little bit of tail weight. So I had to move the uh, weight of the front end forward because this plane was pretty tail heavy to begin with. Uh, the easiest way to do that was to put the battery at the very nose of the plane and it worked out just fine. It flew much better than the, the Hot Wheels one did. Working on the rear wheels, I did not have a piece of metal rod long enough to fit the whole tail um, piece. So I did end up just cutting holes so they could fit right in there. It didn't affect the flight and I think it actually gave it kind of a cooler look because they were tucked away, almost like a hot rod. I waited to install the top canopy. I wanted to make sure that I had uh, plenty of room to work if I needed to install electronics, so that's what I'm doing here. I wanted to make it f fit flushed with the tail fin so that slips right over. I wanted to get that in before I put on the wings. The wings, I just mounted the popsicle sticks. I hot glued them straight to the plane. Seems to work fine. It's not the strongest support. I would recommend another uh, way of doing it, but it worked for me for now. Uh, I am mounting the engines now. Uh, what I did was just cut in an angle to make them fit right into the nose of the plane so that they were flush and that they were at the right vertical angle. I do want to touch on the differential thrust. This is kind of more of an advanced uh, setting that you have to do. Uh, I do have a programmable six channel receiver. That's something you do need if you want to do the differential thrust. It did take me a while to figure out, but someone had a really nice uh, link on the flight test uh, fan page uh, as one of their articles on how to set up the Fly Sky uh, differential thrust, and it worked perfectly. I had messed around with my controller for probably two or three hours trying to figure this out. Um, but I looked at their order, they, they showed you exactly how to do it, and this is what helps you control with the engines. This gives you your uh, yaw without having to use the, the use of a rudder or elevons. 
I'm inserting the servo. Like I said, it is just a nine gram servo. Uh, it is mounted to both wings. So as, as you turn, I have it just hooked up to a switch. It turns fully and it pulls the wings in uh, slightly. They don't go all the way in, otherwise they would hit each other. Um, but it goes in just enough. Uh, if I wanted them to go more, I could possibly install two servos, one for each wing. That would make it a bit stronger. Or I could just get a more powerful servo. That would definitely do it as well. So here I'm just getting all the electronics put back together, making sure the wing switch works. I was really proud of this one. This was the first time I've actually kind of designed my own plane. I did have to come up with the whole mechanism for the wing, and so I was pretty proud of that. It was a lot of fun. I definitely will use this approach for uh, my next builds. I'm hoping to use it for like a jet with retractable wings. I think that'd be really fun. Here I'm going out to test it on the road. After this, I painted it and I had to give it a shot flying. Here was the first run.